Marina, you are a master student at the ETH in Zurich, where you study science, technology, and policy. And you are also a board member of the ETH Cyber Group, the organization that bridges the gap between the experts in cybersecurity and the students. That is right, yeah. Wonderful. So you as a student, we've heard now um, what the issue could be in the finance sector when we have cyber attacks and we're not working together. You as a student, where do you see the issue when we're not having enough people in cybersecurity? Yeah, so first I, I want to say that uh, the number that we just saw in the Slido, which is 40,000 people, the shortage of 40,000 people, was very surprising to me. I didn't know that fact, at least not, the, not until recently. And you know, wh when I learned that fact for the first time, I asked myself a simple question. I, I started thinking, what exactly do we need? When we say we need more people with cyber skills, what do we actually mean when we, when we say cyber skills? Do we need more security researchers or cryptographers? Or do we need more penetration, penetration testers, uh, something that we'll Nina talk about later? Mm -hmm. Or do we maybe need better law enforcement because of cyber criminal? Do we need more policymakers? You see, the more I list possible professions, the more you realize how complicated and very interdisciplinary this whole field is. And, uh, and we learned from, uh, uh, from, from, the present, from an excellent presentation uh, just minutes ago how collaboration is extremely important. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, what do I see as a, as a biggest challenge? I think it's a big challenge for education to educate all of these different people at the same time. And maybe a challenge in the top is to kind of connect all of them and make, make them synced and put them on the same page so they can all collaborate. Collaboration is an important thing, uh, particularly when it comes to students, when it comes to universities and different departments. Where do you see chances to collaborate? Where do you see chances to make sure that more students are interested in the topic of cybersecurity? That is, that is an excellent question. And I would like to answer the question with a very simple example. It is something that is called Cybernantel Challenge. I, I think some of you in the audience know what Cybernantel Challenge is, but maybe it's, it's good to explain what, what it's actually about. So it's a student competition, but it's a cybersecurity policy competition. So we create a fictional cyber crisis for these students and they have to create a policy response. A simple, a simple example would be what if a nuclear power plant was hacked? Of course we need a technical solution, but we also need maybe law enforcement or policy solution or anything else that is maybe not related closely to technical uh, aspects of cybersecurity. And I'm mentioning all of this because uh, as a board member of Cyber Group, the student organization, I created, a, a, with my colleagues, I created a training for ETH students. And it's, it's an extremely interesting to see students in the room who come from so many different departments. We had biomedical engineers, computer scientists, uh, economists, chemists, physicists, and so many different people. And it's so interesting to participate in their discussions and to so see... I might ask you, did, did not have in your training that you did, yeah. you were not just the, the exactly. already the IT people, you invited much more people from other departments. Exactly. And that is, I think that is the, the whole point of the training to, to bring different people together and to kind of let them collaborate because it's super interesting to see how different people perceive the same problem in a very different way. And you were... And you did that training with the students, and then you went to the competition in Geneva. It's called the Geneva Cyber 912 Strategy Challenge exactly. 2022. Tell me quickly, how good was the ETH there? Yeah, I'm very happy to say that this year, two out of four uh, finalists were from ETH, were the teams that we trained. Two out of four were from ETH. Exactly. And, and it was in run internationally. Round. Exactly. And we also won the, the special award. A year before that, we won the whole competition. A year before that, we also won the whole competition. So see, interdisciplinarity really pays off at the end. That was the reason why you won, why you were so good. The interdisciplinarity, the working together. I really believe so, mm -hmm. yes. You also mentioned when we spoke before this panel, extracurriculum activity. Is that what you mean by that? This kind of competitions or what else could be extracurriculum activities as a solution to make sure that we get better skilled people? Yeah, well, cybersecurity is changing as we speak, probably. Uh, so it's, sometimes I have a feeling that it's difficult to be up to date. And of course, formal education is important. I'm not saying that it's not important. It's extremely important because you get to develop critical way of thinking. 
but it's also important to learn outside of your like regular studies. Um, you can participate in hackathons as a student. I'm talking as a student now, or at CTFs. You can you can go to Cybernetic Challenge, or simply you can just talk to somebody from a different department and see what they think about cybersecurity. So it's not only the lectures to make sure that we get good quality, good skilled people that are on top. They have a very, very important task, mm -hmm. but I do believe, well, so women in cyber is, an, is in a great example. You see, I, I, I bet that most of you here, many of you here are students. So you came here to learn something different, which is not necessarily related to your studies. Yeah. Completely different approach. We're now talking about tertiary level, about university level, but we have to get women there interested in this kind of things. And I think that starts much earlier. I think it starts in childhood. So you're a student now, but how was it when you were a child? Was it, what was your dream job? That's a difficult question. I have no idea what my dream job was, but I can tell you that uh, uh, I think you're com completely right. The interest does start in early childhood. And I can tell you a very, 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 simple story. So I was really into mathematics and physics when I was young in the elementary school. So you were already a techie then. Yeah, exactly. But something very interesting happened when I was maybe 12 or 13 years old. One day my dad came to me and he said, hey, you really like mathematics? Maybe you would also like programming. And I said, what is programming? Long story short, my dad helped me learn how to program. And the same, the same year I went to a national competition in competitive wow. programming. So yes, I completely agree. The interests do start in childhood, but I think the support of the family and parents is actually very, very important. What about role models? I have another story for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, when I was young, I was also a scout. Uh, this might not seem relevant, but you'll see it's actually very relevant. <laughs> So I was a scout and you know, whenever, whenever you go to a camp, there is always a tent. So you have to spend a couple of days in a tent. There is always a campfire, many friends that you meet along the way. Anyways, there was one camp that was especially important for me. I went there and you know, whenever there is a campfire, there, there is always a guy that is, that is uh, playing a guitar. It can get very romantic sometimes. Yeah. But... Anyways, you fell in love camp... with him? Let's let's not okay. <laughs> say what happened there, but <laughs> uh, but yeah, one day at that camp, I saw a girl playing a guitar, and I remember thinking, wait a minute, a girl? Well, of course, girls can also play a guitar. How how come that never? It really didn't come to my mind. Mm -hmm. And when I when the camp ended, I remember I came back home and I said mom, dad, I want to learn how to play a guitar. And they said, okay, great. They found my teacher. I started playing. I really failed badly. I'm really bad at playing a guitar. But what I'm trying to, to prove here are kind of two points. So first, so I told you earlier, my, my f family was extremely supportive. My dad taught me how to program. And yet it never came to my mind that I can play a guitar because I never saw someone similar to me who, who does that. So role models are extremely important. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the first point I want to make here. And the second one, and I'm going to end with that, is that uh, the support of the family, again, I'm really stressing that, is maybe even more crucial. Because when I came back home, my parents said, OK, you want to play a guitar? Let's do that. Thank you so much for those answers. I'm quickly looking at Fabio. Do we already have questions for Marina? You can ask them later as well, after the, the others who have been on the panel. Quick check. Um, not yet, as far as I N see. Not yet. Wonderful. So you can maybe, if you have questions for her, you can ask her later on. Applause for Marina. Thank you so much. Thank you.